Troy, uh, what's the injury situation look like? Uh, is, is everybody healthy going in except Shane Ray? Yeah, Shane Ray and possibly Omar Bolden. He's still dealing with uh, plantar fasciitis in his foot, so he was limited today. But And Ty Cambrilo, we'll find out later today if he'll be available to start. My inclination is that he probably won't start, that they'll stay with the line that it was with Brian Harris at left tackle and uh, Michael Schofield at right tackle. But we'll find out later today how Sam Brilo held up in practice today. You said that uh, uh, Harris will get, and I read your story this morning, uh, Tyler Columbus got more uh, plays at left tackle than Harris last week. Do you think that at least they're going to alternate again? Or, I mean, is, is Harris just starting symbolically or ceremonially? Well, or or, or what, what's the situation with Columbus? He's now been here almost a month, I think. Yeah, they, Kubiak, what he likes the idea of moving these guys in and out, keeping them fresh. Ryan Harris had been a little banged up dealing with some injuries, nothing major, but enough to, you know, limit his effectiveness at times. So Columbus will kind of, he could be the float guy, the swing tackle, uh, but I don't see Columbus starting. It's just Kubiak likes the idea of giving a couple series, whether it's to Max Garcia at guard or Columbus at tackle. He believes that it makes him more effective in the long run of the game. And the Patriots have implemented the strategy. It's a fascinating one. And it, it makes sense, obviously, if, but your backups have to be good. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Uh, one other question I'd like to back that up and let the other guys talk, but and you, Troy, but uh, I, I got an email that I, I think is kind of interesting. He says, you know, everybody talks about Kubiak and not letting Peyton do what he wants to do. Everybody rips on the offensive line and Peyton Manning. Why is Rick Dennison getting no criticism whatsoever this year? It's almost like he's the Teflon man that people don't think maybe that he's really running the offensive line or – He's not calling the offensive plays. Uh, do we know whether Dennison is having a good year or not? <laughs> well, he's not because the offense is not. They're ranked 30th in football in total yards per game and worse than yards per play. And part of the reason he doesn't is because Gary Kubiak is still viewed as the offensive coordinator. He and Rick Dennison work, Dennison work in concert on game day, Woody, but the reality is it's Kubiak's offense, and Kubiak is involved in the play calling. To what degree and what percentage each week, you know, that's up for debate. Uh, we're not in, you know, not in the headphones, so to speak. But the reason Dennison escapes it because the blame goes to Kubiak because it's his offense. Now, on the offensive line, Dennison has experience in coaching the offensive line. Yeah. He learned from Alex Gibbs, but he's not the offensive line coach. That's Clancy Barone. Uh, part of it is just the way the NFL has changed and the way they practice. They're not in pads. They don't cut block in practice. And this group, you know, I would argue that it's a little bit of mismatched parts offensively. They're not necessarily set up to run this zone blocking great. And because of that, it, it's taking time to figure it out. And that time, you can't microwave it when you're not practicing in pads and you're certainly not cut blocking in practice. They had the bot. And, we, you know, they had the self-evaluation during the time off. What, if any, major differences do you think we'll see in this offense in terms of scheme or approach or play calling? Well, you and I have talked about this, kids, on game day. I do think you're going to see some sh more shorter passes, quicker release passes. You know, of nine of or eight of Manning's interceptions have come in the pistol or shotgun. So that's concerning because it's not just the formation. Just getting him out from under center hasn't solved the problem. But it appears when you watch him on video, anytime Manning has to pull the uh, ball down and the timing's off, it's a disaster. You know? So I would look for more quick passes, whether that's to the tight end, whether that's to Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. But those are the ones Manning, as you guys know better than I, that he excels at. Get one, two, ball is out. Not one, two, look, progressive read, left side of the field, right side. That's not Peyton Manning. So I would look for quicker passes and this could be the game Owen Daniels finally shows whether he can still play at a high level or a, you know, a decent level. They're going to use Richard Gordon as third tight end, and if he can help with the blocking, the 270-pounder, it could free up Daniels to be basically used like Julius Thomas in terms of where he's just more of a receiver and they're not worried about him blocking. 